Me and it ain't no favor If it weren't for favors they never call you Sometimes I need someone to talk to I'm sorry What's going on YouTube? I'm back to another video If your day's not going good I hope tomorrow is better And to subscribe Click the subscribe button Notification bell Or subscribe Thank you for your loyalty We gonna be it, it, This was long awaited I know a couple y'all been waiting for it And I told you I was gonna get it to y'all I just had to do a little bit more stuff this season before I got the video out, okay? So in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to take better basketball photos. And also right after this video, is gonna be how to edit basketball photos. Don't quote me on when it's gonna be out, but just know I'm also working on that video, okay? We just gonna say that. Y'all already know, man, when it kind of videos like this, damn, gotta have my notes ready for y'all so I'm not staring y'all in the wrong direction, you find what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and jump right into this. So this video is gonna be set up similar to the football one that we did, the basketball one we did about video. It's all gonna be the same concept, but just broken down in different ways for specifically what I'm talking about. So what we're gonna start off with is equipment. Now, just like in the basketball videography video, you don't need the best of the best equipment when it comes to basketball games. You're in a controlled environment in terms of lighting and stuff like that. Yes, sometimes you're gonna be in a low lit gym and stuff like that, but it's very controlled. So that's on your side. So you don't need the best of the best camera, none of that. Will it help? Of course. You don't need the best of the best to produce the quality. That's all I'm saying. But that being said, what I would recommend, we'll start off with camera, use whatever you have. But if you are trying to get something new, what I would recommend is my usuals, A73, A74. And if you got a big budget, you go on and get you when, if you're just doing photos, get an A9 or, oh, that's a, that's a, if you got a budget like that, hey, but if you're just doing photo, A9. But there you go, A73, A74, A9. A72 is fine as well, realistically. Like, honestly, these are all good cameras for just photo. They are for, for basketball games. Because it's not too much about the camera when it comes to this. Now, lenses. There's not too many cheap lenses you can get at a 2.8 f-stop. Because you, you, you're going to need a 2.8. Because like I said, a lot of these games are, it's a controlled, lit environment. But a lot of these gyms, especially if you're shooting high school, some colleges even, the gyms are not lit very well. They're, they're, the lighting is bad. So sometimes you're gonna have to, you know what I'm saying? Having an F4 compared to a, a F2.8, the two focal lengths I would recommend is the same thing I did for uh, the same thing I did for basketball. You can do a wide angle if you want to get creative. You can do a wide angle, which would be like a 16 to a 35. You can do that if you want to get creative with your shots. You can 100% do that. But in terms of what works and what's usual and stuff like that, it's gonna be like a 24 to 70 or equivalent in that range, and a telephoto, which would be like a 70 to 200 or anything equivalent in that range. I say the 24 to 70, that's gonna be for like your baseline shots and stuff like that. The telephoto is gonna be for when you're in the stance or even sometimes for your baseline shots, we'll get more into that later on. Or if you saw my POV videos, you see where I use my telephoto the lens. Other than that, for equipment, bro, camera, lens, that's all you need. I'm not gonna lie. That's really all you need. You don't need no mic, no monitor, no cage, no none of that. No armed, no. Now we're gonna jump right into the settings. The way I like to break up my settings for basketball games is for warm ups, I like to shoot a lot of stationary shots. I love stationary shots, especially like I did it a lot with football. People just standing there in their own essence, kind of like giving like main character vibes. So I like to take a lot of photos like that. That doesn't require a high shutter. So just so that it can limit the amount of grain in my photos, I lower my shutter when I'm doing warm-up photos and I just, you know, keep my ISO higher, but not too high. But that way, so basically I'm properly exposing my image while lowering my shutter instead of increasing my ISO to save myself some grain. Makes sense? I hope it does. To put numbers on it, I would I would have my shutter at that 320 and my ISO would be around that, that 2,000, 1,500, 2,000 range, depending on where I'm at. But uh, yeah, pretty much, right? Now, when it comes to during game, I up my shutter to around like 640 and I up my ISO as well to around that 320. I try to stay at that 2000, but 320, mind you, I have the A1. The camera is good in low light, so I don't get as much grain as something like a, a Canon M50 would get. So a Canon M50 at 3200 versus a a1 at 3200 is very different. So be mindful of the camera that you have, and all you can do is test it with what you have. You can test these settings with your camera, but just be wary, it may not work the same just because of the low light capability of the camera you may have. Obviously, you wanna keep your f-stop at a 2.8. You wanna keep your focus area small, so we've already talked about this in every video I've done about sports photography or videography. You wanna keep your focus area small. It's like the flexible spot, it's a spot, uh, the spot focus area, flexible spot focus area. You're gonna to wanna to put that to wherever you're taking your photos from, you know what I'm saying? So if your subjects are usually at the top of your frame, like for me, I move the focus spot up and I make sure it's small. So that way I can be very selective of what I want to have in focus. Because once again, just like football, there are a lot of moving pieces going past. 
people, let's not call them pieces. There's a lot of moving people going past your screen and stuff like that. A ref could walk through your, through your, like past your camera, or maybe you're, you know, somebody in the crowd could walk past your camera, or whatever the case may be, man. You don't want that to mess up your focusing. On top of the focus area, your focus speed and sensitivity. I wouldn't have it too high, but I wouldn't have it too low. So you wanna go ahead and put that low, like somewhere in the middle. You wanna kinda be manually changing it. You're, you're, you still have on autofocus, but most cameras, when most cameras, cause I'm not sure about all, but when you push your shutter down a little bit, it'll focus on whatever is in that frame of the focus area. That's what I mean by you're manually focusing on certain things. So you're not allowing the focus to do it itself. You're pushing it down halfway, focusing on what you want to have it focused on, and then you're taking your photo. So for example, which if you watch my POV videos, you'll see I do this. If I'm tracking a subject, I'm pushing it down halfway. That's when you see that green box up there. I'm not taking the photo. I'm just focusing on them the whole time while they're moving. And then whenever I think it's best the time to take the photo, I take the photo. I do the same thing if someone's walking past my, uh, my camera, right? So if someone's walking past my camera and I don't want to lose focus of whatever I'm shooting in the moment, I hold it down halfway. I'm not taking any pictures. I'm just holding that focus. So I'm not sure if all cameras have that, that feature where you can hold focus like that because most lenses have a button you can hold it to hold focus. On my A1, I think on my A7 III as well, I hold focus with the shutter button. Check if your camera can do that, but that's how I like to hold focus. But still, that's why I'm also saying you don't want your sensitivity to be high or low. If it's high, you may not even be noticing, but something can mess up your focus. So just put that somewhere in the middle, uh, find that setting or whatever the middle is for you, put it in the middle. You might even want to put it on a low if you're doing it manually. It's no reason for it to be high. For my camera, I use picture profile too, but pretty much it, your picture profile isn't really too, too important. Just make sure it's nothing that's too vibrant or too contrasty, whatever the case may be. You want it to kind of be like, a log in a way. So that way when you put it in Lightroom, you have full control and capability to do whatever you want with the photo. You know what I'm saying? Correlation to that, please shoot in raw. I've never said that in any of these videos. I didn't think I had to, but I've no one's ever brought it up, but I, I, I just want to make it clear. Shoot in raw. With raw photos, that's where you can use your presets that are full capability. Now we have settings out of the way. Now we're gonna jump right into positioning. Y'all should know by now the two positionings. It's the same thing as video, I promise you. Baseline, shooting in the stances, the bird's eye view, you know what I'm saying? So it doesn't have to be a stance, but anywhere above the court that you can be shooting down on the court, bird's eye view. So you got baseline, bird's eye view. When you're baseline, get a low angle. We ain't got, don't piss me off today. Stop taking pictures standing up. It looked bad with football. It looks even worse with basketball. Sit down. Okay, so we got the main stuff out of the way. Now we're just gonna get into the breakdown of the game itself. Now, what I like to do is a lot of stationary shots, which y'all know from looking at my photos, you don't have to do that. It's really up to you in terms of what type of warm-up shots you wanna do, because warm-up shots can be anything. There's a lot of action going on during warm-ups, a lot of dunking, stuff like that. I personally don't like those shots. That's just, well, me. They're not bad. I just don't do them. Um, I do a lot more stationary shots when it comes to warm-ups. So you got your stationary shots, or you can get a bunch of action shots, or you can do both, really. Just. You could honestly just do both. Because like I said, there's a whole lot of action that goes on during warmups. It's a lot of action that you wouldn't even really be able to get during the game. Now for end game, honestly, bro, just get any action at all. So anybody shooting the ball, any type of point guard or, or anybody like dribbling the ball up the court, somebody dunking the ball in the game. You know what I'm saying? Like if you know the game of basketball, you know to take pictures of where the action is and it's wherever the ball is for the most part. And it's kind of, that's pretty much how we're gonna go about that. I, I, I think that's the best way for you to do it. Follow the ball, track the action, know what's going on on the court and you'll be able to capture damn near everything, literally. It's not a huge field like football. Football, there's a whole lot more to focus on. There's a whole lot more pieces on the field and it's a whole lot more things to think about. Okay, what should I be taking pictures of? It's not the same thing with basketball. It's only five people on the court, depending on the team you're taking pictures of. If you're taking pictures of both teams, you got 10, but usually it's, only, usually it's only five people on the court. A quick little tip, when you are taking pictures of these players, if you're taking pictures of someone shooting the ball, it's a habit of mine, which I've noticed in my last POV video. I don't know if y'all peeped, y'all may have, but you can go back and check. Every time someone would shoot the ball, I would, by force of habit, track the ball. I'm taking photos, not doing video. So there's no reason for me to track the ball and see if the ball goes in the hoop if it's taking me away from my subject. What I suggest you do is if a player shoots the ball, stay on them and track them the entire time. When I was taking photos this one time, a player, he shot the ball and got an in one and he was on, he had fell on the ground and everything like that. And I missed that whole shot, which I feel like would, it could have been a dope shot. I, I will never know now because I was tracking the ball as if I was still doing video. So try to make a habit of staying on your subject after they shoot the ball, taking pictures throughout the whole form of the shot after the shot and everything like that. Cause you never know what type of dope shot you can get from doing it. 
But lastly, for Endgame, take pictures of the coach and the bench, especially during like certain type of celebrations and all that stuff. I, yeah, yeah, I, I think you should 100% do that because those shots are dope. I don't have too many shots of the bench. I have a shot of uh, coaches, like coaching during the game, stuff like that, showing a lot of emotion. But the bench, like throwing up threes for like when they, when they, when they you know, boom, or heads happen up. Like I don't really have shots of that. Don't do as I do, say as do as I, don't do as practice as, you feel me? Okay, so just try to get those shots. Those are really dope shots. I'll probably find one on Google to throw up just to show us an image. I probably already did that. But honestly, bro, other than that, that is really all there is to it. It's not really that complicated to take basketball photos. Like it's, I'm not going to say it's the easiest sport to photograph because I haven't photographed all sports, but out of the mainstream sports, it is the easiest. It, it really, really is. It's like I said, it's so many moments between the game where you can capture the same shot over and over and over and over. And it's just a back and forth constantly. You know what I'm saying? Like with football, it's only so many shots you're gonna be able to get during offense and then a touchdown or a catch. That's a rare shot to get because it may not happen all game. Basketball, shoot, someone shooting the ball or dribbling the ball, it happens all game. So you have so many opportunities to get the same shot over and over and over and over. So that's why I say basketball is like, it's a really easy sport to photograph. So it's really forgiving, we'll put it like that. Other than that, everything else from this is done in post to make your photos look good. It's all done in post. Y'all have the information to get it done through your camera, the editing one, maybe a week after this is up will be up or maybe a couple days who knows but whatever time you're watching this check to see if that video is up if it is it's gonna be in the link in the description or in the cards other than that that's pretty much all uh thank y'all for all the support thank y'all for watching this video don't forget to drop a like don't forget to subscribe to the channel don't forget to check out the merch link in the description down below don't forget to check out the pre state link in the description down below and lastly don't forget to check out the broadcast link in the description down below for the instagram broadcast channel the dtv army broadcast channel that's where i do all my q a's and stuff now when i you know i'm talking y'all and i'm asking y'all about certain things and i do a bunch of shout outs for you guys tap in i think we're at 200 members now i'm trying to make sure i'm not forgetting nothing. and there's a my eyelash in my eye i don't know if y'all been noticing i've been over here twitching i'm going crazy i'm sorry okay we gonna get up out of here thank y'all for all the support and we drop a like side of the channel it was circadia see you next one peace